body is most susceptible to sleep at two periods, between midnight and six in the morning and in the middle of the afternoon. The one that's less well known is the one in the middle of the afternoon, which is the one that affected me. I got sleepy and I knew I was sleepy, but you know, all my life I've been driving, you get sleepy, you get through it. It's that belief that you're going to get through it that kills. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, at least 100,000 police reported crashes each year are the direct result of driver fatigue, resulting in an estimated 71,000 injuries and 1,500 deaths. You think you're going to get through it this time and there's no problem. It'll pass. But there are these times when it doesn't and the consequences can be horrific. Tom Callagy, a college professor, knows all too well the dangers of drowsy driving. He and his wife of 33 years were driving back to their home in Pennsylvania. Tom dozed off at the wheel just for an instant and drove into the trees. His wife died in the crash. Janie was asleep in the front seat and I didn't want to wake her up. She was tired and happy and we were on our way home and I should have, but I didn't. It had been sort of gray overcast all day and drizzle and the, the road was gray and the water was gray and the trees were gray because there were no leaves on them. The road was straight. There's a profile for these kind of accidents and all of these conditions fit this type of accident, something I didn't know at the time. And there's the middle of the afternoon in terms of the, the body rhythm dip. I did all the normal things one does when one gets sleepy while driving. I turned on the radio, I opened the window, I, you know, those kinds of things. And I was just about at the point where I realized I should stop. And I'd actually sort of started to reach over to wake her up. And it was too late. Tom believes he fell asleep for just a few seconds, something that happens to most people. We call those microsleeps. And that microsleep, which could be a second, two seconds, three seconds, literally they're disconnected. But if you are traveling 65 miles an hour in just three seconds, you've traveled the length of a football field. I wasn't speeding, I hadn't been drinking, there was no medication, substance abuse, anything. I just fell asleep and the car went off the road, sideswiped a bunch of trees, and then finally hit one, and uh, she died instantly. Crashes like Tom Callagy's can be prevented. If you're tired, don't drive, and know the signs that you might be falling asleep behind the wheel. They include difficulty focusing, burning eyes or yawning repeatedly, trouble remembering the last few miles driven, feeling restless and irritable, tailgating, missing traffic signs or exits, or hitting rumble strips. You must absolutely act as soon as you think that you're getting sleepy. You stop, take a nap, you drink some coffee or anything else with caffeine in it. Actually, soft drinks are preferable because you have a definite amount of caffeine in them. Coffee varies enormously. Change drivers, walk around, whatever. But you must absolutely act. If I'd known then what I know now, it simply wouldn't have happened. Janie would still be here, but she's not.